Hi, everyone. Let me see if I've got this right. There we go. There we go. I had something set wrong. I don't know what. Hello, everybody. That means you, Aunt Beck. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm getting ready to do something what I, that I think is really fun. So I hope we get a few people here. <clears throat> We're missing Anne today. And um, I'll be glad to get her back. So that we can uh, work together. Beck, do you plan to be here for the whole two hours? If so, would you mind moderating? If not, that's fine. I know I didn't ask you ahead of time. I'm going to wait for a few more people, see if anybody shows up. I know they're having a sale over at Keisha, so there may be some people there. And that's fine. Aunt Beck. I guess you can, because you answered my question. <laughs> so, um, what have you been up to today? Just resting. Oh my goodness. I worked down in the basement a little bit, getting it a little more straightened up. I don't think it'll ever get there totally, but it's getting better. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and start because I have a lot to do. So I am going to today show how to take a stamp, a rubber stamp, and uh, use it to create a 3D image, which it looks like a carved image. The back is flat, so it's not totally 3D um, as far as, you know, it's not the back, it's just the front of the image carved it, so it looks like it's carved out like you would see on a headboard or something like that. And that's basically what we're going to do today. Um, I, if I have time, I might do one other little thing. But um, this is made out of polymer clay. There are several different brands of polymer clay. There's Fimo. Um, um, well, you know, they just all go right out of my head. Sculpey, Cernet. Uh, several different kinds, but it's it's any kind of polymer clay. Some are softer than others. Female soft is is a pretty soft clay. It's not quite as hard to condition. You can do it with your hands fairly easily. But most clay out of the package has to be conditioned. Hi, Ruth. Glad to see you here. Most clay out of the package has to be conditioned because it's been sitting there and, and the molecules in it have just sort of settled down and aren't moving around. The clay has to be soft enough um, to mold or, or um, work with. Otherwise, it's just it's too hard. Once this clay, uh, and this is an oven-fired clay, um, this particular brand, which I'm using right now, is Fimo Soft by um, Eberhard Faber. And it bakes at 265 degrees, 265 degrees for 30 minutes. Now there, it, it, it also depends on, um, oh good Ruth, glad to hear that. It also depends on how thick the clay is. The thicker it is, the longer it needs to bake. Um, and what brand it is, but it will always tell you on the package uh, the temperature and how long to bake it. Um, you don't want to just throw it in a regular oven and bake it because it does have not a lot, but a little bit of a fume that comes off of it when it's baked. And um, hi, Janet. Oh, thanks. And uh, so if you're baking it in an oven that is not dedicated to polymer clay, then you want to put it in like a container. So you could take like uh, roasting pans and flip, flip one on top of the other and clip them together. And that's, that's enough to keep it from getting on the inside of your oven. So um, just as a safety feature, I thought I would tell you that. 
Now, most people who do clay a lot have a dedicated oven. You can use a toaster oven, uh, an expensive toaster oven, all the way up to a convection toaster oven, which would be a nicer one to have. Um, I always just had a small uh, toaster oven and um, bought a uh, oven thermometer so that I can be sure because, you know, they fluctuate so much, those little small toaster ovens, so I can be sure that the temperature was correct. And if, if I put it on 265 and the thermometer read 235, of course, you know, I would turn it up a little bit until I had the correct reading on my thermometer before I'd bake anything. And normally also, um, normally I bake on a um, ceramic tile and you can just get those at Lowe's or Menards or Home Depot or any place like that that sells tiles and just buy one tile or two, however many you want and uh, just use that. Just needs to make sure it fits in your oven. Some of those toaster ovens are small, so, you know, um, but if you have, if you're putting it in your regular oven, you know, you can get a bigger one as long as it'll fit in some kind of container and bake in the container. And um, those work the best. They make, they're nice. Um, I, I don't have any right now because when we moved, I got rid of all of mine. I got rid of my toaster oven and a couple other things. So right now I'm just, uh, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to do it on paper and that's fine. You can peel it off and put it on something later. Or you can, you can use like a, to bake it in, you can use like a glass pie pan or something like that. So um, basically that's, uh, that's, the short, that's the short version for polymer clay. There's a lot more to it. You can do so much with polymer clay. I mean, it's, you can just, you can, you can make uh, cabochons that look like real stone. It, it, you know, you just have to learn how to do it. But today we're, we don't need, we're not worrying about the color. Um, obviously this one was just done with the flesh colored clay. Today I'm going to show you some in white. And then I also have some uh, pale, um, like a lavender color, just so you can see it better. But these are going to be painted, so I don't have to worry about uh, the colors. If I had wanted to, I could have made, like, made the wings pink with pink clay, made the body flesh like it is now, made the hair yellow to look like blonde hair. Hi, Janet Nash. Nice to see you here from across the sea. But in this case, these are going to be painted, so I'm not using colors for color's sake. I'm just using the clay because that's what I have. <laughs> So I want to, let's see, was that all I wanted to say about that? Um, yeah, it took me, this is a female soft clay. And um, last night it took me about 30 minutes to con condition a block this size. And that was using a pasta machine. And you don't have to have a pasta machine to work on clay, but it helps so much, especially, especially if you have problems with your hands or wrists or anything. So I'm just going to show you this real quick so you can see what, if, in case you don't know what one looks like. I've had this one for a very long time. I bought it somewhere for $5. And let me move this back. Where's my thing? And um, I've been using it for, I'm going to say over 20 years and it's still perfectly good. And this is the kind that, um, it's a regular pasta machine, and it's the kind that you could make different kinds of pasta. You can roll it flat, and then you could put it through one of these, and it will make fatter or thinner noodles. So the way you use it for clay is this button over here changes the distance between these two rollers. So you can make it thinner or thicker. Hi, Mary Lou. Glad you jumped in. Oh, so anyway, this is, uh, this knob turns and it's got, um, how many does it have? I think it has six settings with one being the biggest. Some pasta machines are the opposite. One would be the smallest. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you here. And um, then there's other kinds. I have two. Here's the other one. It's just the roller. So this was sold as a clay rolling machine. And I don't like it near as well as my old pasta machine. And I think I picked it up at a yard sale or something. 
like I said, I know it was about five dollars. They're a lot more than that if you buy them new. And so what they what it happens is this has a little clamp that goes in here, and then this clamps onto your table to keep it steady. It's it's heavy, and then the handle goes in the side here, and it it cranks it. So it cranks all three of these. I have used these before to make strips, but I, I didn't really like the way it came out. So I just use this part. So, and the reason I'm not showing how that actually works is because it'll shake everything to pieces when I'm rolling it and you'll just get sick. <laughs> oh my. So that's that. Now let me go back here where I was. And, um, Polymer clay can be, once it's baked properly, it can be drilled, uh, painted. Um, you know, you can do just about anything with it once it's, once it's cured. So I normally, when I used to do clay a lot, I would have two or three different or more different um, uh, tiles where I'm trying to say, so that I could load them up. And then when I was ready to cook or to bake them, then I could do them all at one time. So those are the basics that you needed to know. The other, the only tools that you, you don't have to have the pasta machine. The only tools you need are something to roll with. This is a polymer clay roller, but you can use an old wine bottle or anything that, you know, glass rolling pin that won't stick. Um, this is a, Oh, what do you call this stuff? I can't think of it. Um, it's plastic. <laughs> and it doesn't stick to it too bad. And it's easy to store. So, But you can use a rolling pin or anything that will roll it out. So for this is the one that I already had baked. This one's been baked. So, And you can see it's the same size as this stamp. It's not exactly the same. But I basically use the stamp to get the shapes and the sizes and everything uh, so that I could, I could work on them. I could sculpt on it. Acrylic. Yes, Aunt Beck, that's acrylic. Okay, so that, that's the one I wanted you to see that I had already made. And so yesterday, these are the ones I want to use. And what I want to use them for is on the cover of farm journals. I have two farm journals I'm going to make. So these are stamps that I've had for a while. Just like I said, rubber stamps. Bye, Mary. <laughs> oh, poor Beck. She's got Scott pounding in the bathroom again. <laughs> so these are the stamps I want to use because I want to put them in ovals on the front of my two farm journals. And I thought these would be a good size and um, I really like the designs. I think they're very cute. So last night, simply because I hadn't done this in a while, I thought I better practice. <laughs> so, so I practiced. So I made the, the chicken. And what I did different was instead of leaving this pot, I just cut it off here and made it into a nest. So I don't know how well you can see her. She's, it's just on a piece of paper right now. Yeah, rooster and a hen. So you can see how um, shaped she is. And I haven't really done much in the way of detailing yet. So, you know, I could still do her wings and things like that. Her eye's not in yet. I could do these so they look more like straw and what have you. I could put in some things on her chest. So that's all to be done yet, but it's going to be painted. So, you know, you got to kind of decide, do you want to do all the, all that, or do you just want to use shading? So I'm not too sure exactly how much I'm going to uh, texture it, but that's, that's this one. So there are two examples. This one's not baked yet, so it's still soft and it will stay this way until I bake it. Now, you might be able to see this little shadow right here. 
that is where the bottom, when I started out, it had the whole, the whole bucket or pan or pot or whatever it is there. And um, paper will leach some of the polymer out of the clay. And that's why that it looks like a greasy spot almost right there. But it doesn't hurt anything. So this can sit for a long time before I bake it. But um, you bake it first, then you paint it. I could have, when you're doing polymer clay, if I'd done this in colors, like say for instance, I did the body in yellow like this and this in red clay and this in brown clay or whatever, you can do it like that and then you don't have to paint anything. But um, I wanted to paint them, so I did them like this. So that's her. So she's, she's pretty far along. So now I'm gonna work on him. And I'm going to try, let me move this. I'm gonna, I decided to go with this pink color because I thought the white was a little hard to see. Not too bad, but um, I didn't want it to be hard to see. So this time I'm using purple. And I'm going to work on this glass surface. I put this paper up here so the glare is not so bad. Like that. So to start out with, this, I hope this is, if this isn't enough, then I'm going to use some of the white that I've already conditioned because this is what it looked like before I conditioned it and it took a while. <laughs> yeah, the clay will stay soft until baked, but it will stiffen up a little bit. It won't be quite as soft, um, but it will stay, you know, it will stay soft. You can still carve into it and everything or, you know, uh, with the tools. And the tools I use, I started to say this a while ago and got sidetracked. I have my roller, I have an X-Acto knife, I have an old ceramic tool, I have a whole stack of dental tools that I can use if I want to, but um, all that's not necessary. I like to have a tool that has a like a spoon shape on the end of it, like this one. Let me see if I can get that. See how it's got a little spoon shape? This is a Cricut tool. And um, I usually have a small double pointed, smaller double pointed knitting needle, but I don't know where, I'm, I had to dig for all this stuff because it, I haven't used it in a while. So it's kind of like not sorted too well. I like one of these because it's easy to use on edges and stuff. And a pokey tool. This is also a Cricut tool. And some small stiffish paint brushes. And I'll show you what those are for in a minute. And a pair of scissors, a pair of small scissors. So I'm going to start this. I'll leave him right here so we can see him. I'm going to start this by, I need to roll my clay out so that it's as big as the rooster at least. And I could do this on the pasta machine and do it really fast, but I've already put that down on the floor, so I'm not going to drag it back up here. So I, there's a couple ways you can really do this. You can start with a big, slab, big thick slab and carve it down, or you can start from the bottom and build it up. So I'm going to start from the bottom and build it up because I think it makes more sense to do it that way. And I think it's easier if you're not used to sculpting or layering things in order. I think it's easier to see it that way. Okay, so it's pretty much, it's big enough for what I want to do. So we're going to lay it back on the paper. And I can tell this is not going to be enough clay. The hen... Here's the block, the same block that I, the block that I started with the hen was exactly the same as this one. So you can see how much I used for the hen. I only used about a third. So we'll see how this goes. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's going to be painted. So you take this, I'm going to do it this way so I can see what I'm doing. And you don't have to make a huge impression. I'm just trying to get the lines so that I can see what's what. So I can, you probably can't see these, but I can. They're real, they're not very deep. 
but see how the impression is there? So now I'm going to take a cutter, a knife of some kind. I'll probably use this one. And um, I'm just going to cut all the way around the whole shape to, just to cut out the shape. And it's just a matter of... Now, if I had any, I would be doing this directly on my uh, ceramic tile instead of on this piece of paper. But it, the paper, I mean, the thing is kind of stuck to the paper right now, so it's not going to, hopefully, not going to move around. And all I'm doing is just, I'm fussy cutting around this rooster design. And don't, don't throw the clay away because it's, it's still good. You're going to be using it too. Can everybody hear me all right? I'm trying not to be too loud today. Hi, Barb Clark. I was thinking about your funny story that you told about um, playing the piano at church in your leathers. <laughs> had to laugh again. It was funny. So this is going to give me my basic shape. Oops, watch out feet. And I'm just sticking the extra clay on this other excessive clay that's coming off. So I don't have to worry too much. I can just, you know, slice it. I, don't... I just want to kind of be close to um, correct with your cuts because this does give you the basic shape. You can add to it if you need to or change it if you want to. It's all up to you. I think it's fun because you can take, you know, you could really take any stamp you wanted. Some work better than others, of course, but um, I think these are some good choices. Up for your toes, little guy. It's kind of hard to see. This rooster's going to be dizzy by the time I'm done. So I hope Anne's having a good time with her family. I can't remember if she said they were doing the hockey today or yesterday. I think it was yesterday. She gets to see her grandsons playing. She's pretty excited about that, I think. Now, just because I'm using this stamp to make my design, it doesn't mean I have to go by it exactly. I can do whatever I want. You know, if, if I don't want his feathers to stick out as far, I can just cut them off or whatever. If I want him to be sitting down, I can just cut it, cut his legs off. <laughs> okay, now these, this didn't go all the way to the edge of the stamp, but that's okay because it'll get covered. So you just kind of, you know, go around and use a thin cutting tool. And cut a nice line all the way down to uh, right now i'm cutting it all the way to the paper so that it will pull out easily i'm really excited to do this for my um, journal because i think it's going to be so cute to have these in um ovals so the the oval will be will it will be like covered with fabric and just the hole is open if that makes any sense. And then they'll be sitting inside the oval. So they'll be framed in the oval. And since I've got two to make and I had a rooster and a chicken, I just figured I'd have to do that. Oh, Barb, I have so many cabochons and all kinds of jewelry pieces still that I need to sell. I've sold a lot of them. 
I don't do jewelry shows and that anymore, so it's a little bit harder to sell them. Keisha sold a lot for me this last year. But I like to make my own cabochons for bracelets and beaded necklaces and stuff. I like to do bead embroidery, so that works out really well. Almost done here. But, you know, this, it doesn't take that long, but the more intricate it is, then the more it takes, longer it takes. Okay, so let me clean this up a little. So there we go. We've got the basic shape. And at this point, if I wanted, I could go in and clean some of this up, but I don't really need to yet because I'm going to be adding on top of it. So here's the rooster shape. And you can still see some of his markings. So that's kind of a, a, a good way to keep track of what you're doing. Now, from here on, I'm going to be layering. Now, if you, if you think about this rooster and you try to think about what is the farthest away from your eye, and the farthest away would be this part and this part probably, but really this part, and I would say his face, because this part of him, you want it to be a little rounded so that it looks, you know, it doesn't just look flat because he's he's actually rounded so this would be the bottom part so that part i don't have to put anything i don't have to add to because it's already the it's the back it's the lowest part that's going to be on here just like on this on this hen her face you can see here her face is the lowest part on there and this is raised up so this is her rounded body here's her fluffed out wings so this part is a little is a little thicker than this part. This part is thicker than that part. This part is thicker than all of them because it would be the closest to your eye. Hi, Natalie. Natalia, I think is the way you say that. Nice to have you here, Natalia. We're usually here on Sundays at 4 o'clock with Ann, and she's out today. So you, you just look at the picture, the stamp, of the stamp and if you don't have like if you have a um, clear stamp just stamp the image so that you can look at the image you don't want to have to look at this the stamp itself it's a little more difficult but so that you want to have an image to look at so if you don't have a stamp a, a block stamp like this a wood stamp with an image on it just stamp it on a piece of paper then use that piece of paper as your map so in this case, like I said, the lowest, the farthest away part is his body here. So I don't have to add anything to that. Now, these wings are over top of, I mean, these wing feathers are over top of these tail feathers. I mean, I don't know if you can see that or not, but but they are. So his wing, his wing feathers come out to here, and his tail feathers are behind it. And then the wing feathers... Are going to be in front of this and this. So do you get what I'm saying? You have to look and see um, how it's layered and what's in the front and what's in the back. And then what I do is I just take whatever clay's left over or whatever clay I'm using, roll it out to about how thick I want that next layer to be. And you don't want to get it too thick because then by the time you get done, it'll be like this, you know, you don't want it that big. Okay, so where'd he go? Here he is. So now the next thing I'm going to layer, I'm going to do his tail and his, uh, what do you call that part? I don't know what it's called, up around his neck, I guess. Oh, his chest, this is his chest. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to find the part that I want to replicate, which is his tail, and I'm going to put this clay on his tail. So it has to be big enough to cover the whole tail that I want to replicate. And I'm just going to lay it on there, like so, however it fits best. And just 
just press enough to where I think it'll leave an indent. It'll leave an impression on the clay. Then I pull this off and I can see, see where those feathers are. I can see that. So I, now I can take this piece and if I, if it's, if it's uh, handy, I can use my scissors. And all I want to do is match up what's going on. And I'm just going to cut around that. I could do this with my knife. Sometimes it's just as easy to cut. And I'm just sort of cutting around the edge of the ends of the feathers. Then I'll go back and trim them off. And because I didn't impress this very well, I can't see. Okay, so here is, I think, here is the wing feathers. I'm going to cut them out because I don't want them yet. Well, I can leave them on there. It doesn't matter because it, it'll get built up anyway. And then here is the top. Okay, so I cut away what I don't, what this layer does not consist of, I think. <laughs> yeah go like this. You know, I'm going to do that over because I really don't like the way that turned out. And I'm going to add a little bit of clay at this point. And I don't care if it doesn't match because it's going to be painted. So let me roll this out again because that wasn't really big enough and I didn't do a good impression. And that's the thing. If you don't like it, roll it up and start again. if this is big enough. Let me get a better impression. Oh, we're glad you're here, Natalia. Now, that looks a little better. I can actually see all the feathers. put this up here where you can see it better. <clears throat> so I'm just going to cut around and I'm just touching the tips of the feathers and let's see we go here. So I hope this is making sense. It's if you think about it step by step, it's not really a difficult thing. Sometimes it's a little fiddly, but uh, now I'm just going to go back and cut those tips out again. So this is the tail feathers that I'm working on right now. Now your hands aren't going to feel, I don't know if sticky is the right word, but you can actually, you can feel something on your hands. And some people notice the smell of polymer clay better or more than other people do because they're just a little bit more sensitive. I don't find it offensive and I find a lot of smells offensive. So it, 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 I can smell it, but it doesn't bother me. And also some people find that when they bake the clay, they can smell it then. But it, like I said, it's not really offensive. It's, it's a good idea to have ventilation as always, you know, whenever you do something like that. But I don't find it an offensive odor or anything. But you do want to protect your oven, I think. Um, polymer clay is not, you shouldn't be eating while you're doing polymer clay. Um, you shouldn't put your hands in your mouth or your eyes or anything, of course, you know. But once it is baked, it's okay. It's it's not it's not really toxic once it's baked. Just use your common sense, you know, like you would with it for anything. Now let's see, where am I here? Okay. 
So now I got my tail feathers cut out. See, this didn't go all the way to the end of the clay, but that's all right. Um, so I'm going to put my tail feathers where they belong, which is right here. So see, I'm making another layer to raise this up so that it's thicker. It's going to be thicker. And um, then the next layer will be even thicker. So I can go ahead and um, use my fingers, use my tools to get these things uh, pressed together so they seal together. You want to make sure you get, you know, you press it down so that there's no air bubbles in there um, and that they are together. Then I take um, a tool and this is where a tool like this little spoon looking tool or let's see what's in this. Um, ow, that hurt. Poke myself. Uh, here's another spoon tool. And here's a little bitty spoon tool, so that's probably what I'll use. And here's another, here's one that's similar to the uh, cricket tool I've got. So anyway, you can use whatever you find. If you can't find a tool that works for you, take a dowel rod or take a, um, a skewer, a bamboo ske skewer, and make yourself one, you know doesn't matter what it's made of, where it came from, what it was meant for. If it'll work, just do it. Yeah, the clay sticks to itself. Now, there is a liquid polymer clay. It's in liquid form that you can use um, to stick some things to be perfectly sure. Like if you're making a piece of jewelry and um, you're putting a piece onto it that you're worried it's not going to stay, sure, use the liquid polymer clay. But in this case, we don't really need that because we're just layering these pieces on top of each other and um, it's not going to be hanging or anything like that it's going to be glued flat to the surface so i'm just now i'm just taking this uh tool and using my fingers also and just sort of smushing the edge down you can do a lot with just your fingers and um because the clay is soft and pliable you can if you if you can see right here Oops, right here, you can see where the two layers of clay are. So all I'm doing is pushing this this way to blend them together and to also round that edge. Now, his feathers aren't going to be very round, but um, I don't want it to be just chopped off. So, you know, I just use this to smooth it out a little bit. And it kind of it kind of slides the clay a little bit. Um, you know how clay works. Now, um, I figured by now somebody would be asking me, do I have to use polymer clay? Can I use air dry clay? Yeah, you can use air dry clay. You have to be a little bit more careful because it has the tendency to crack. The polymer clay is not going to crack. But since it's something that's laying flat, you're not as worried about it being chipped off or something, in this case anyway. Um, if I was, was going to put something on there that had something sticking up, well, I wouldn't do it in the first place because it's on the front of a journal. But if I were making something that was going to have something sticking up, like an arm or leg or something, that's not going to, you need to do something like that in polymer clay or some kind of clay that's not going to crack and break. Air dry clay will crack and, dry, and break, in my opinion, and I would not waste my time by doing it like that. Now, I did a class at a bead retreat one time showing them how to make um, clay uh, faces to use with beading and stuff. And we used air dry clay because it was cheap and we were just learning how to do it. It worked the same, you know, as far as the technique and stuff. You had to use water a little bit more to um, keep it moist enough to until you were done. With this, I can leave this set for a week, come back to it, and work on it some more. So I've got that. Oh, I didn't do that part. I've got that kind of together. 
It's just a matter of how you think it should look. I could get real picky about it and go in here and separate all these little areas and make it look real feathery. But I don't want to do that in this case because I'm lazy. <laughs> no, I, I really think that the, for the application I want to use that it's not necessary. Now, if I have something that still needs to be, doesn't look quite right, I can just trim it off. And you can actually do that until you get to the point where you're putting it in the oven. You know, if you see something later, it's not like, well, I can't do anything about that. You can add clay, you can take clay away. And so on and so forth. Okay, now I'm going to leave that where it is for now. And you can see it's already taking on a little bit more dimension. And I can still see where my wing feathers are going to go. So we're going to do the wing feathers. Let's see, we're going to do them. No, we're going to do this part next. Is up on his neck. <clears throat> so are, are y'all liking this? Bye, Barbara. Buy some good stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to roll out some more. My hands are so sore I can hardly do this. <clears throat> and as you can see, each piece doesn't have to be real thick. It just has to be thicker than what's under it, you know, what you're putting it on. So I made this one a little thinner, and I'm going to just do this part right here, because I think it should be above. So I'll, I don't need to do the whole chicken or rooster. I'm just going to do this part by his neck. I'm just going to cut that part out. So there's no need to do the whole thing. Let's see if I got it. Yeah, I got it. Let's see here. <clears throat> so I've got his, his little neck cut out. So here we go again. Now I can go ahead. I'm, not, I'm going to cut around his face. But I can go ahead and cut the waddle with it because I'm going to be adding some to that so it'll help to have it underneath. So I'm just going to start here. Now this white clay, I can tell, is um, a lot softer because I conditioned it a lot more than I did the purple clay. It's I conditioned it last night, so it's already nice and soft purple clay I just did a little bit ago and it was stiffer to start with. Some of this clay has been um, I've had for I don't know how long uh, quite some time. 10 years probably. Probably less than 10 years some of it. But um, there was a big sale one time and I just bought a whole bunch at that time. I could cut out the comb also, but I'm not going to. So I just cut this part out. So here we go. Come here, Mr. Rooster. Mr. Rooster. Yeah, the air dry clay is, is hard on your hands. All right. But polymer clay, you need to always wash your hands really well. And I usually put alcohol on mine just to make sure they're really good and clean. Because alcohol will... Um, work with polymer. So I'm just stacking this up and I'm using my finger again to smush and round that little edge down to the layer under it. And I don't care that this coming over here. I don't want it. Let's see, where's that? At? Yeah, that's right. I don't want it on this part get up here. I want it on this part because I want that to stay just as it is so I don't want to cover it up. But um, there's going to be a wing coming comes out here this whole wing and that's going to be the last layer on his body. 
the highest layer on his body. So it's still got to go over. So I just want this to stand up a little bit just so it looks like his body's round. You know, a lot of, on some of the jewelry that I've done before um, that I use with my bead embroidery, I want the shiny because if I do something that looks like a certain stone, I want it to be shiny like the stone is or it doesn't look right. But most of the time, I like, I'm going to call it unfinished clay that doesn't have any um, uh, coating on it or any, and no, uh, what do they call it? No resin on it or anything like that. I, I like that look. I like the matte look. And that's easy enough achieved. You know, you can sand it and everything and get a nice matte look on there. So I'm just using this tool to sort of, since that's such a little space, to sort of um, flatten out that edge so it doesn't look like it's just standing up on top of everything. Same thing here with the, let's see. See in here. I want that to be smooth. I'm just sort of sliding that around, creating a little edge. Then I can take my finger and make it better. This clay is sandable. Um, and if you're if you want it to look like glass, you can get it to look like glass. but you have to sand it a lot. And you have to go down to really small grades of sandpaper like they use on cars when they're doing body work. Like 2000 grit or something like that, or you know. Or you can use a, um, I have a Fordham, which is like a Dremel, like a limousine Dremel. <laughs> and you can actually put buffers on there and do it with that. It just all depends on what you're after. But polymer clay is really an amazing product. You can make dolls out of it, jewelry, just, you know, anything you want. This tool isn't working for me. Let me find this other one. So this is a little fiddly here because I'm trying not to disturb what's under it. And I keep sticking my fingernail on things. <laughs> You notice as I get more concentrated, I talk quieter. <sighs> okay, so that's pretty good. Now I just got to take care of these edges and I'll try with my finger first. And you can always go in and draw a line if you need to draw some lines to, you know, show where things are dented or whatever. Not real happy with that, so I'm gonna. Now, if you had started, bye Natalia, thanks for coming by. If you had started with a big slab and you were car carving it down, this is what you that you would be doing it like this. So here, I don't, I'm not happy with how thick this is right here. So I'm, and here's the waddle, and I don't think I want to make it thicker there. So I'm gonna carve back some to give it definition. So I'm going to, let me show you where I'm going to carve it. Here's the line that goes around the waddle. All the way to there. And I'm going to carve out a little bit of this because I think there's too much of it. So I'm just going to take this little tool, any kind of knife would work, and I'm going to um, just carve some of it out. So this isn't the sharpest tool. I probably should use my exacto knife. Maybe it'll work better. I have to pick it up, sorry. So I'm just carving around here, slicing out some of that down to the waddle.
And then I can just pick it out, hopefully. Come on, baby. There. So I got that roughly chopped out of there. Now I just want this waddle. I use my fingers when I can, but sometimes you can't. So I just want this waddle to go down so that it's smooth. And I want this that I just cut out. I want to flatten that out because I have a couple little chunks down there. And then also smooth it out this direction. So what I did was, I recessed the area around this wall. And I know it's probably difficult to see what I did because it's two colors. Let me see if I can turn it, maybe. Oops. So see what I did? I took, this is hard to do backwards. Where am I? <laughs> I took some out and then I just went and smoothed it down like this to make it, uh, to give it a good smooth transition. So if you were carving the whole thing, that's what you'd be doing. You'd be taking stuff away instead of adding well, taking away and adding in, but mostly taking away, just like I just did. Does that make sense? This is harder to do when you have long fingernails. And mine aren't even that long. Okay, so. That's a little rough, but it'll I'll fix it better later when I'm after I get to where I'm at the fixing point. Okay, so there. There's that. Now what is next is the wing feathers. So let me go back to my stamp. Here we are. I'm going to go back to my stamp and get some wing feathers. I don't want them to be very thick, um, but I do want them to be, I do want to raise up the middle area of it. So I'm going to make a little ball of clay and flatten it out so that it's not too tall, just big enough to give a little lift in the middle of the um, wings, so I need to shape it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so instead of just making a whole big thick piece to put in here, I'm just putting, uh, I'm just adding some where I want a little bit more thickness. which would be like right here. So I'm just putting this little piece in here, pushing it down, kind of rolling the edge down. And then I'm going to do the um, wing feathers. Take my scissors, cut out the shape. And this isn't too thick because I didn't want it to be too much thicker, but I want it to I want to be able to tell that it's going over the other wings. So And another one the wing. I 
I miss Anne. She could be talking. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to take this and it's going to go right up against there and follow the wing. Now, so see what it does? It's raised up this middle. It's made it thicker there. Because I didn't, I didn't want the edges real tall, but I wanted the middle thicker so it looks like the body's rounded. And that's all I'm basically doing. I'm just looking at this picture and thinking, oh, yeah, well, if he was standing up in front of me, he would be shaped like this. You know, he wouldn't just be flat. And then I start adding pieces so I could see where he's where his shaping is. Now, I want um, in this case, I want to find my tool. Where did I do it? Uh, oh, here it is. I want this part of my wing to be like really attached to the body because that's where it grows out of, sort of on the front part. So I'm mushing that down a little bit so it's closer. And then I'm just making sure that everything's in the right place. Now I can go and work back here and add in my, my feather lines and stuff because this let's see do I have a what kind of tool do I have for that oh too big I think this one will work see this is a good little tool it does a lot of stuff so now my feathers here here's a group of feathers here's another group of feathers here's the other group of feathers this one's on top, then this one, and then this one's on underneath. So it's so it's the tail feathers, and then there's the back group of feathers. The next group of feathers is a little over that, and this is over that, and this is over that. So each one needs to look um, like it's... I'm just going to use this tool to make some feather marks on here. Each group looks like it's on top of the other group. I might not be putting as many groups as is on the stamp, but we'll see. So this is going to give me indication where the feathers are. Okay, so now you can see where the lines of feathers are going to be here and here and here and here and so on. So now what I have to do is I have to go back like I did right here and kind of scoop out some of that so it'll look like they're layered on top of each other. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before. And I'm going to use these little marks I put as a guide and just slice out a little bit so that it looks more dimensional. Now, if I wanted, once this is baked, I could go back in and sand all these little areas and make them really, really smooth. But I probably won't do that because I want it to look a little rustic, you know, is, is what I'm thinking. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to paint it yet, but I might even use like a wash so that it looks antiqued or something to that effect. So I don't. I don't necessarily want it to be real, real smooth because if I put a wash on it, it won't have anything to, it won't show up as well as if it's a little rougher. I hope that makes sense. 
I wasn't thinking about how hard this would be to see if the colors, if the if it was all one color. I can't win for losing. <laughs> So I'm just sort of digging some of this out so that it will look like it's more layered. I could have went in and layered each each wing, you know, each section. Should could have started here and put this on top and this on top and this on top, but I didn't do it that way. This will work all right. There's more than one way to do things. Thanks, Janet. So now I can go in and and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of mashing down into that little corner there and plus mashing behind it to make it smooth, to make the transition smooth. I'll have to hold it up and show you because I know you can't see it with the way these colors are. At least I don't think you can. Let me do this and then I'll show you. It's basically basically the same thing I did up here. I'm just uh, shaping it out a little bit. Keep the, sticking my fingernail into his head. So I hope this is giving you at least the idea of how to do this so that if you decide you'd like to do it, you'll get it. You could really do it with any clay. I just like polymer clay because I've used it a lot. So if you look at it from the side, let me get it the right way. Where's that black paper? You can see how it's shaped. It's hard to tell from the front because the colors are just blended in. So let's see, what else is there to do? I can go in and put some lines in for the feathers, pick up the little, um, check design that's on the, see this, I can, um, it's already there a little bit, but I can go in and make it more noticeable, put some lines in these feathers, um, do a little bit of straightening out in different places. I'm not going to do anything to the feet because they don't really need it. So this is basically done. It needs a little bit of work. Oh, I got to put the comb on. I didn't do that part. Let's just do a little bit on that. This part right here. And I'm just going to squish it out and put it on. And I can't even make this edge. This edge is going next to his head. I can't even make it real thin so that it can just go right on there and I don't have to fiddle with it too much. So I'm just going to do this. And that raises it up a little bit. And just freehand it. <laughs> yeah, he needed that. And just straighten that out, clean up the edge a little bit. And I could just leave him exactly like he is, or I can go in and do a little bit of work on him, which I will do later. 
because I have another thing I want to show you to go along with this. It's not using the stamp, but it'll go along with these so I can bake them at the same time. So, you know, you can go back and look over it and see if there's anything. Like, I'll probably need to straighten his toes out a little bit, put in some details, feathers and stuff on there, and then he'll be done. So, let's look at it. I know this looks really messy, but that's just because of the um, um, the change in the clay, the color. It makes it look like it's not finished, but it is. So here he is. So you see, I have I have plenty of room to put in some feather marks. And just need and I need to go around and clean up some things like right here there's a line showing there where it joined so I need to smooth that out do a little bit of rounding here on the front of him because he looks too square and things like that but otherwise that's basically the technique so the other thing so here's let's look at these one last time here so here's the rooster. I, like I said, I still have to put all those feathers in. I chose not to do this feather right here. I might add it back in. I'm not sure yet. Here's the chicken. Where's the chicken? Come on, chicken. Here's the chicken. So I hope you thought that was fun. Now what I'm going to do is um, set this aside. And I wanted to make some tassel toppers. Here was the original one. I want to make some tassel toppers for these two journals. So I'm just going to take some more of this clay. And <clears throat> these are basically going to be beads. Yeah, Janet, I think it's going to look really cute. Yeah, when I finish the journal, I will show you the finished rooster. You'll see it on the journal. I got to go buy some uh, ceramic tiles to bake these on because I don't have anything else, I don't think, to put them on. I'm going to get rid of that for a minute. Get this clay softened up. PM Studio, PM Artist Studio, I should say. I don't want to short you. How you doing, Mariah? Okay, so now I got to decide how big. I think I want these to be kind of not huge. So I'm just going to take. They're not going to have legs, so I don't have to worry about those. Actually, this rooster looks pretty good. I'm real pleased with him. Um, the heat of your body helps to warm the clay and helps it to be <laughs> helps it to be um, softer. So if you if you get a if you get a block of clay that is been sitting around, especially for a while, and it's hard kind of hard, hard to condition. People do different things. Some people sit on it. Okay, Janet, thanks for coming by. Hi, Kathy. Some people will sit on it for a while, um, put it under their arm for a while, of course, in the package, you know. I put mine in my bra. <laughs> if that's the warmest place I have. <laughs> And after it's in there for just a little while, it'll, it'll warm up a little bit and it'll be a little bit easier to use. So let's see what this what this rooster looks like because I want to look. I'm just going to take 
this ball and kind of shape him into a rooster. And then I have to put a hole in the middle. So I'm just looking at this shape kind of to give to help me remember how it looks. I don't want this to be too big. I don't want it to be like a shade cord or finial or something like that because it's just going to be hanging on the end of the book of the journal. So let's get this basic shape here. So I've kind of flattened it out, took that ball and flattened it out and just sort of cut it for the basic shape so it's starting to look kind of roostery. I'm just going to try to make it like this because it'll go on this book so that way it'll kind of match, you know. And by using similar size balls, they'll both be about the same size, which isn't really important because they won't be on the same book, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, let's see. I think he should go this way. Now I'm not going to have enough for his feathers, so I'll probably add some for that. But his body has to be thick enough for the hole to be big enough for a tassel to fit up into there. So, but his tail doesn't have to be thick, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and do this. Leave his body kind of roundish. He's kind of got a big chest. Kind of a butt. Sorry for that clicking. Okay. Come on, buddy. So I can add to his tail. So if you like to make things that go together and match, this is a way to do it. You might be able to do it better than I do. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, no, that's not right. He has a big old chest and a little skinny bottom. But I don't want that. Okay, so here's the back. Here's the wish somebody could do that to me, just pull a piece off and put it somewhere else. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Rooster, cooperate here. So he's kind of got a triangular shape at the top and he's got this big chest and he's got I'm not going to put that part so that'll end there and he's got a little butt and then he's got a head that comes this way there that's better all right I need more clay so he's got to have more for his tail it's not going to look much like a rooster. So I'm just going to add on here and fix it until he looks like he looks. So I can take off or put on wherever I want. Foghorn Leghorn, I know. <laughs> goodness. Oh, Kathy, how awful. Hi, Brenda. Now, let's see, where am I? This comes down like this.
Now it's just a matter of carving everything in there. I could have left it just like a solid shape and then just painted everything in, I guess. <clears throat> I haven't made one of these before, but I've been wanting to for a while because I like tassels. Okay, so it really is thick. You're not going to get that many tail feathers. Oh my, it's going to be a busy week coming up, got lots of things going on. Yeah, Kathy, that is a big weight lifted off. I don't blame you. Okay, that's probably good enough right there. And then, uh-oh, oh my goodness, it's a good thing you're getting it fixed, Becky. Okay, he's almost there. Let's put him a little bit of a comb. Now the thing with him is I have to turn him over and add some to the other side so that um, he looks the same from both sides or at least close. I'm trying to make his comb. Well, there's such a shadow here. That's way too big. <sighs> Becky, now's not the time to have a pit in your stomach when the bathroom's all tore up. What's my problem here? <laughs> I figured you did. I was just trying to make you laugh. <laughs> than I wanted him to be. Now I showed you this knitting needle and this is what I like to do with the knitting needle or anything round like this, you can just kind of roll it across there and it will work it out to the edges. Okay. 
I'm really not too happy with the way this is going. But you never know until you try. And sometimes you end up with something better than you expected. I don't know if this will be one of those times. <laughs> I'm just trying to build this up a little bit so that it looks two-sided. And I think I'm trying to make it too complicated. Okay, this is what you do when you're not happy with how it's going. It's not horrible, but I don't like how it's going. Before I waste my time doing anything else, I'm going to start over. No fear. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh my goodness. So you're taking everything out, Becky, and starting from scratch, sounds like. Why making this so difficult? All the way to the studs. That's the way to do it. If you're gonna do it, do it. Oh. Okay, well, this is a little more what I had in mind. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, this is a place to come today if you wanted to take a little snooze. Because I'm just talking quiet, not talking a lot, being calm, except for clicking this thing. Okay. Alrighty now. Let's get his beak, his little fat body.
So Becky's he done with the jackhammer? At least that over with. Well, well, Mr. Rooster, don't be obstinate. Just making his tail feathers now. I'm gonna have to practice on this because it's not as easy as I thought it would be. But you never know until you try. I'm real pleased with how the rooster came out, I have to say. Then he needs side wings. Well, hmm. so this will bake at the same time that I bake the other things, and then I will have to bake, make the tassels and um, insert them into the bead. So let's get his head done, and he'll be done. I might make some more of these, practice a little bit till I get a little better at it because I think I'm making it just too difficult. It's not really, shouldn't be that hard. Okay, so here's his. That's too big. Come on, my man. Get that on there.
a little better. But I want him to look real good. Not just a little better. Let's get his gobbler on here. My fingernails weren't so long, it'd be easier. Okay, little buddy. I guess that's good enough. Good enough for you. So then the tassel will come up from below, and I want to make this a little bigger down here because that way the tassel can fit up inside the top of the tassel, and you won't see any knots or anything. And then he'll get painted also. Okay. So here he is. Took longer than I expected. I don't want to make his his tail feathers very big because then they'll just get hung up on stuff. Okay, let me put this up here. So here he is. And there's the hole in the top for the hanger to come out. And there'll be a bead up there too to cover, to close the hole up. So, And then here he is from the side. have to play with this feathers a little yeah like that here's the other here's the front oh he's crooked his wobbler's been wobbled but you get the idea and then the bottom I carved it out a little bigger so that the tassel can fit up inside there and then I'll do one for the for the um Hen also, but not right now. I'm not going to put you through that again. <laughs> so, um, I think next week when Ann is back, we're planning on doing some jelly plating. And um, I don't know how good it'll be, but you can come with us and help us make fools of ourselves if that's what it comes to. <laughs> so, but uh, it should be fun. And, uh, Hope to see you then. Thank you for coming today. We weren't very wild and crazy. Have to wait for Andy to get back for that, I guess. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something different. And here's what we did. And up. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Aunt Beck, thank you for moderating for me. I hope everybody gets all their construction done. <laughs> it can be a pain, I know. And I hope you all come back next week at 4 o'clock Central Time. Ann will be here. I'll be here with her. And we will be crafting and creating friends. So I'm going to say bye for now. Everybody have a great week. Bye-bye.